Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, and today we're going to be doing another SQL tutorial on the update statement. What are we going to cover in this video? So we're going to look at how to update data within a table. And we're going to cover the following scenarios. So one of our customers has just got married, congratulations to her, and therefore we need to update her surname in the table. We also have a customer that has just moved address, so we'll also need to change that within the table as well. So we'll go through some examples in SQL Server. Now, with this statement, it's always important to remember we are going to be changing data within the database. So if we're simply just running an update script against live data, very important that we take a backup of the data. We need a state of that data beforehand, just in case anything goes wrong. And another important point to remember is to remember the WHERE clause. And we'll go through an example of why that is very important. Let's jump over to SQL Server and go through some examples. So I've come over to SQL Server, guys, and today we're going to be looking at our customers table in our bookshop database. It's only a very small table. At the moment, anyway, I do want to add more more data to it. This is just a database I use to play around with for myself and go through some examples. So we're going to be using our customers table. And what I'm going to do first of all, like I mentioned uh, at the start of the video, it's very important to take a backup. And uh, An important step as well would be to test your script in a non-production environment just to make sure it works correctly. Now, in a perfect world, we would never have to run update scripts against the database. They're usually an aftermath of bugs we've found in the system where data hasn't been updated correctly. Uh, update statements can be parts of store procedures, so as we know, they'll be executed um, and update the data within the table, but it may come... Um, to a time, I know in my experience anyway, that we have to write update scripts directly against the database because our data is not in a consistent format and there is certain data that we need to change. So we're going to be going through some examples today. I've just chosen two simple examples. We are going to be looking at more complex updates further down the line, so within stored procedures um, as well. So I'm just going to show you the syntax for a simple update statement and it's the keyword update and this would be our table name and then we have the keyword set and here we have our column name and remember I also mentioned at the start of the video as well and we'll set that to our value so that's what we're going to be changing, that the WHERE clause is vitally important. Uh, so WHERE column name. Equals value. And that is our general syntax for an update statement. So we're updating the table. We set in the column we want to the new value where the column is an existing value. Now, when we're updating data in a table, it's important that within the WHERE clause, it's important first of all that that's present. We'll go through an example in a minute of why that is so important. But we also want to look for a unique value within the database. So primary key is always a good one, as I've got within this table, the customer ID. Now, what I'm going to do, just as an example, I'm just going to drop this into a new customers table because I don't want to affect my existing data going through this demonstration uh, so I've just dropped that into a customers new table it's just an exact copy of the existing table so I'll just show you that this is our customers new table it's exactly the same so let's look at our first scenario I've got a customer who's got married uh, Michelle Wilson in this case and her new surname uh, what should we say it's going to be Masters so Michelle Masters is her new name so we need to update that so within our script we're going to update our customers underscore new table we're going to set 
uh, column C underscore last name equals masters. Now, if I didn't have a where clause here, and I ran this script, and I will run this script to demonstrate. So if we just execute that now, and we look at the customer's new table again. Oh, well, we've updated every customer to have their surname as masters, which we didn't want to do. So if we're updating without a where clause, it's going to affect the whole column within that table. We're going to be updating all of that data, which is why the where clause is important. I'm just going to drop that table now uh, and we'll just rerun the insert. So let's have a look at our customer's new table. Again, we, we're back to the same data that we had. We'll just comment out this drop for now. Okay, so we've got our first two lines. We updated our customer's new table. We set in the last name to masters. So now we need to add the WHERE clause. Now, like I mentioned before, it's important within the WHERE clause that you look for something unique. So if I chose, for example, City here, uh, she's currently in Leeds. She's the only one with the city of Leeds. But I could have billions of rows within this table and multiple customers in that city of Leeds. So if I was to say where C city equals Leeds, then it would there's a chance that I would update multiple customers there. So what we're looking for is something unique. Even if I was to go on her current name, Michelle Wilson, there's a chance another customer could have that name within our database. So there's a chance we could be updating multiple data. And the thing is as well, it may not exist at the time we run it. We may take a copy of the table, execute that, and it only updates one row. But remember, within a production database, we may be writing to this table all the time. We may be adding new customers all the time. And we don't know what's going to happen in between the time that we run our script to test it locally and when we run it within the production environment. So in this case, we're going to say where C underscore ID, which is customer ID, equals four. So if I highlight that query now and run that, we've got a result here, one row affected. And if I select from the customer's new table again, we can see that only Michelle's surname has been updated to masters. So again, it's very important that when we're working with the update that the WHERE clause is present initially, unless we may want to update all data in a table. There may be, a, a, say, a bit column, just a true or false flag, and we may want to update that to be true or false for everybody within that table. If that's the case, that's fine. We don't need the WHERE clause. We're working on the whole table, the whole set of data. So that would be okay. If we want to update... Um, a lot of different rows within the within the table so maybe we want to update the city of London to Greater London we could simply just say where the city equals London and that would update all the cities to Greater London so we would know we're working on all of that data but if we're just looking at one row then it's important that we use a unique value within that WHERE clause so as we can see guys, the update statement is pretty simple. It can get a lot more complex and we will move on to more complex updates in the future. I will be doing further videos on those. If you don't know how to back up and restore databases, I do have other videos on that so please do check them out. And now we're going to move on to our second example. So we've got a customer who's who's moved, moved uh, locations. So we need to change his address. In this case, uh, customer number two, Paul Thompson, he's now moved to Telford. So we're going to update that. And as we can see here, we've got multiple columns. So we've, we store the first line of address, the second line, the city, and the postcode. We're not gonna worry about telephone number. We'll say he's, he's taken that, that with him in this case, but we could update that as well. So we want to write an update statement to update multiple columns for Paul. 
So we're going to go ahead and do that within this same table. So we're going to update customers new. We're going to set, in this case we want to set the first line. So we want to set the first line. Uh, new address is, let's say it's moved to number 10, uh, Wayside. Okay, so, and then we can have where our customer ID, so it's unique to pull, no other customers are moving to the same address, equals two. So we'd set that first column, the first line of the address as 10 Wayside. But we also want to update the second line, the city, and the postcode. And we don't want to have to run this update statement multiple times. We could, but that's a bit long-winded for what we're going to do. So within the set operator, what we can actually do is a comma, uh, a, a comma separated list of columns that we want to update. So if I set the second line as Withington, I don't know if that's an actual place, I'm just making up data here. Uh, the city is going to be Telford. To be honest with you, I don't even know if that's a city. And the new postcode will be TF21SH. Now, I do know Telford postcodes begin with TF. I know that much. So, within our statement here, again, we're updating our customer's new table. We're not working on the original at the moment. Uh, we're setting the first line to 10 Wayside, the second line to Withington, the city to Telford, and the postcode to TF21SH, where our customer ID is 2 for Paul Thompson. So let's go ahead and highlight that and execute that script. And let's run our just our select all. And we can have a look at Paul Thompson. And now we can see his address has been updated so that's one benefit of the update statement that we can within the set uh, set operator we can enter a comma a comma separated list of columns and then new values that we want to update them to we couldn't do that if say we wanted to update multiple customers um, because we wouldn't unless they were living at exactly the same dress we wouldn't be able to do that, we'd need that WHERE clause in there. And another quick example I've just thought of, guys, while, we, uh, while we're in the middle of this video here, is we could go through an example on where we update based on a join. So, let's say our customer's new table is a, is a later version of our customer's table. And we want to know, we want to update the differences. So in our old table customers, we want to update the data based on our new data in customers new. Again, for this example, we're going to be using Michelle Wilson, now Michelle Masters, that we've updated in our new example table. So what we'd look for in a join, we want to select all from our customers table. Uh, and because both tables contain exactly the same column we're going to alias them within the join and in this case I'm just going to use the aliases A and B um, we're just going to join on the customer ID uh, matching in both tables so if I just run that query we've quickly joined those tables together again I'm using the select all the wildcard here which I wouldn't normally do within production it's just quicker to go through some examples rather than keep writing out all the column names over and over again okay so we've got all our data here and what we could do to identify differences uh, in the last name column so we're going to say where in our original customers table we want where the last name is not equal to the last name in our new customers table Would help if I put the column name rather than the table name. So we just added there where we say we're at last name in our customers table doesn't equal our last name in our customers new table, our latest version. So what if we wanted to update based on this join? So we want to take the last name out of our customers new table 
and update the last name in our customer's original table. So how would we do that? So to, we've wrote this query to identify the differences. So we want to update based on this join. Now a simple update is not going to work here because this join is not a table itself. So we need to write that within the update statement. So first we need to indicate to SQL which of these tables we're going to be updating. In this case it's our customers table. So normally we would just write update customers, set our column um, and in this case we want to pick up the, the new value from our customers new table. And we're also going to add a from so this will make sense as I start writing it out. So we're going to say from customers as a so we're going to put in our join here in a join customers new as b on our customer id in our customers table equals our customer id in our customers new table so now we've aliased the tables within the from clause so we're not actually updating the customers we're updating our alias as a so remember the from clause starts the query and um, we're going to set our last name within our customers table equals the last name within our customers new table. I've just noticed there I've joined the two tables to themselves. Just got right, underscore new. Bad naming convention there from me. And then what I must remember to add is the where clause. So we want to say where our last name in our customers table again is not equal to our last name in our customers new table. So if I run this query again, the select, we can see we get one row. Let's run this update. So we're saying we're updating table A, which is our customers table. We're setting A dot last name equals b dot last name from our customers new table we're going from customers in adjoining to customers new and we've got our where clause in there as well so if I execute that query now now if that's executed correctly because of this where clause here we're saying where the customers table doesn't match the customers new on the last name column we shouldn't have any results Correct, we haven't got anything returned. I'll just run the whole join without the where clause. Uh, in fact, I'll just run the select from our customers table. So in our customers table now, we can see we've updated the last name for Michelle to Masters. So that was just a quick example of how to use joins as well to run an update. So we work with the aliases of tables rather than updating them correctly. Because remember when we from and join, we have got sort of a virtual table there, a table that doesn't exist. We've combined two sets of results together. We may only be working with a few columns, but we've combined a few sets of results together. So we need to indicate in the update what is the underlying table that we're going to be actually updating data in. But farther down the line, I will do a lot more videos on advanced updates. We'll look at store procedures, joins, and lots of different things as well. If you have enjoyed this video, guys, please do check out my other videos. I do upload videos regularly. And if there's any particular area you'd like me to do a video on, please do leave a comment in the comments box below, and I'll get that up as soon as I can. So just to recap, we've looked at the update today. Again, in a perfect world, we may not have to write scripts like this, but they're often the aftermath of bugs. And as we all know, working within software, we tend to come across a lot of bugs. Uh, and we have to update our data to get it in a consistent format. But this is always a good skill to know, even if you are writing update statements within store procedures. Syntax is exactly the same, as long as you understand the underlying principle. Uh, all of the queries will be in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. 
click that notification button so if you click that notification button you're made aware of when I upload new videos so you can check them out first and if you've got anything you'd like to email me my email address is asbeardeddev at gmail.com thanks a lot for watching